Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Glenn Southern and I'm the Aroid Artist here on YouTube. This humongous bag, which is 18 litres of pond, is what this video is about today. Now last week we covered off uh, Lekka, which is lightweight expanded clay aggregate. And this week we're going to have a look at pond from Lakusa and it gives you basically a similar sort of semi-hydro experience or it can be used in one or two other ways. And I'll explain to you how I use it and why you'll see Pon pretty much in every plant behind me and it's probably in about 70% of my plants now um, and it works really really well in, for most plants and I'll cover off which ones I think you should use it with and which ones I don't think you should use it with so let's dive right in. Before we dive into the pond video, I just wanted to share this new grow light that I've been working with. It's called a Coco Lila, and it's a thousand watt LED grow light, and it's from a company called GrowStar. I'm in the UK, so I bought mine from Amazon, and they're available from all major retailers around the world. Just check your country to see if you can get them. I got mine to, to go into the studio because I needed to cover quite a large area with one grow light, and it's to cover quite a few different types of plants, including aroids, and some Trelliscantia and, and some cuttings as well as full plants. And it's worked extremely well for the few weeks that I've had it. It's actually got low running costs. It only consumes 110 watts, which is just like what uh, you get in a fish tank heater. It's got the infrared and the red and the blue spectrums that you need to really establish a plant. It is completely silent and uh, it is warm when it's on, but it's exceedingly bright. So it's much, much brighter than I expected when I took it out of the package. It's perfect for hydroponics, greenhouses, indoor gardens, cabinets, grow tents. You can put cane plants under it, potted plants. And the warm white light simulates um, sunlight. So you're getting that full spectrum or, and the full range of wavelengths of light that you need for healthy plants. So I've dropped some links down below. And if you like it, maybe take a look, have a look at the reviews because it's a very strong product with good five star reviews. And I heartily recommend it. So if you're in the market for a grow light then take a look at the Coca Lila. So when you order pond, you often get this brochure from the Kusa. Um, and I like it because this is where I first learned about how to use their self-watering pots and what products they have. And a lot about this classic system and the wick system. So if we just look at the back, you can see all of the different, there's, there's the products themselves. So you've got Lacusa pond, Terra pond, Orchid pond and Veggie pond. So they do obviously different mixes for different uses. We're only going to talk about Lacusa pond. And then they have all of their different pots. And again, we'll talk about all the different uses now. Now, the ones that I keep are the Classico, which are these ones here. So these are these rounded ones. And um, I've got one here in front of me right now. So it's like this huge pot here, which we'll talk about in some detail. And that comes in various colours and it's got it's got one primary use which is to, to to have a reservoir at the bottom so in the book it has the two systems it has the classic system and then the wicking system and you don't have to use Lacusa products for this you can use the pond with any um, pots that you design but we'll talk about how to make your own um, towards the end of the video so this is the bit we need to focus on here so in the classic system, it says you basically place the planter, um, the, the, the tray at the bottom of the planter, which is where the water goes, the reservoir. And because there's, the, there's, there's this little um, separator at the bottom or tray, and it's got legs that go down into the water, the pond is, is poured in and goes into those legs. And it sits about an inch up into the pot. And what that means is if you then fill the rest up with um, soil or the normal substrate that you would use, bark mix, whatever it happens to be, and you plant any plant normally, what would happen is it will suck up the water through these legs and it will get be drawn up into the roots. So if your root system doesn't reach to the bottom, then it's able to draw those the water and therefore the nutrients up through the pond and up through into the soil. So that's one way to, to do it. And it says planting, growing in phase and watering and dry phase. And basically what happens once these roots it reach down into the pond, from that point on, then you can go straight to the, the watering phase. And that means you fill the water in the side up to the max level as an indicator on, on, the, um, on the pots. 
and then from that point on all you ever have to do is just water down there you, you never touch the soil again and that usually means by that point that your plants roots are well down into the pond and it's going to look after itself now I don't really do that there's not there's not I've got one or two plants that I've got like that and I've left them like that but it's not something I prefer and I'll be all, I'll also be honest that the the, the, the self-watering pots are not ideal for me. I don't like when I can't see my roots. I like to be able to take a pot out and examine it. So we'll have a look at that at the end as well. So this other side is a wicking system, and this is the one I use mostly. And you will have seen a similar system in my um, LECA video. So basically what you do there is you can literally fill your pot with um, completely with pond. But in the middle, you'll have a wick, which for me is usually a microfiber cloth or you can use a, a large candle wick. And that goes into the water, which is lower than the pond. And then what happens then is that the wick constantly is driving water up into the center of the pond and the roots will find their way to it. And that's that's basically how you, you use these self-watering pots with just pond. Now, um, it, one of the arguments about pond is that it can be quite expensive. Now, if you use it that way, it is expensive because you'll need a lot of it to, to, to fill these, these larger pots. So I generally keep my pots to a much smaller size. For example, this is a Philodendron brantianum. Um, and this one is, is basically gone from a, a single leaf to, so a single leaf cutting to this little plant that's, that's growing nice and healthily. And it's in this tiny little pot with a net pot. Now this is from um, a guard, like a, a fish tank supply company or a, a garden center where they sell pond supplies. And what I do is I basically fill the bottom with some lecker because I like to have one layer of the larger rocks just at the bottom. And then I put the, the on top there, I'll pour in the pond. And on a, on a larger one, I will actually put a wick in it. But these small pots, all I do is I keep a certain amount of water in the bottom there it's dirty because when you if you don't swill this or, or or flush this pond through you have dust in it and that can go on for quite some time if you don't you know wash it first of all i've never found it to be a huge problem but some of the the bigger pots with a lot of pond you would be much better to wa thoroughly wash it through first like you do with lecker with my small ones i don't normally mind it normally cleans through after a, a few flushes um, but in the bottom of here, the pot just goes just down to, to about um, probably about a centimetre from the bottom and the water just touches the bottom. So I don't even put a wick system in this. And then I just water that from the top. And that's generally a tiny, like the smaller version of this. And that's how I keep most of my cuttings um, that have gone into plant for the first time. But what I always do is, before I plant them, I always make the root, make sure the root has got long enough or it's grown long enough to get down to the bottom. Because if not, you're going to have to top water while the plant is establishing. And that's what it says here. Is basically, you, you just need to make sure that you've got it well established before you grow it on like this. And that is probably the most, that's the way I would, I would use pond more than any other way. Now here's another example where th this one's been in here quite some time now. Um, there's a few bits of lecker got in there which we don't need. We'll put them out. So I often do mix in lecker. It really, it really doesn't bother me at all. So this is well established now. The roots are well, well grown um, to the bottom. Bottom. And what actually happens is they will come out of the bottom. Like you, you'll be used to this with with any plant really that gets to the bottom and that actually can touch the water and you do have to be careful because sometimes you know if they sit in water you sometimes can get a little bit of root rot but for some reason I don't get root rot with with pond if they find their way out of the sides or they find their way down then they seem to be absolutely fine and it, and it, and it doesn't really cause me an issue so the next size up that I use is like a six inch pot um, so, so these are, I get these from Ikea as it happens. Now it looks a bit wobbly in it because in the bottom of here, I've got a few lecker balls as well. And that means it keeps it off the bottom and the roots will go down and they'll get down into the water if they need to. And I also use wick systems with this as well. So quite often if around this size, and I'll show it on screen now, I'll, uh, for, for taller plants or for things that are gonna go up a moss pole, I'll sometimes drop the moss pole down 
right into the bottom of the pot and I'll have a microfiber wick that, that goes up through the middle and that will help, definitely will help to keep sending water back up. Once these plants are established and the roots have hit the sides and the bottom, then it, 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 it doesn't take any work at all and there's very, very little watering to do. They seem to just get on you know, very well on their own. This is a Syngonium Three Kings. It's got absolutely no problem. It's got new life coming through. This is a brand new leaf. Along the same sort of lines, this is a Syngonium Albo Variegata and this has been in pond all its life. This came from a wet stick. Um, so you can see absolutely thriving in pond. It's never been fed, so it's just using the feed from, from the, the pond. And the roots on this one aren't quite down out of the pot yet. And there's a tiny, tiny drop of water left in there. So I hardly ever water these at all. Now, if you take these out, you'll find, even though there's hardly any water in there, I'll do it in a moment, you'll find that the, the roots are still quite moist. They won't be dripping wet, which is what we want, but you will find that they are um, quite... Uh, just just moist enough to, for the roots to keep trying to find the water or drawing the water up. And that, again, so Syngoniums are, all, virtually all of my Syngonium are in uh, Pon, um, with a few exceptions that are in Lekka. But none of them, not one single one of my Syngonium are in any kind of soil or bark mix or, or aroid mix. So let's quickly have a look at what's actually in Pon. So over here we have Lekka. This is what we covered in our previous video, and that's up above now if you want to come and have a look at that. So that's basically clay that's been superheated and popped. So we looked at that last week. I'm not going to look at that now. So over here we have perlite, and that's another mineral that you might be used to using in your plant life. And here in the middle is what we get when we tip out a pond bag. And it's split down into a number of components, really. So you have pumice, which acts very much like are uh, um, vermiculite or more, more so more like the perlite so it basically is it's a mineral so it's well draining it allows for aeration and it's very very porous so the next one along we have lava rock same sort of story there's not as much lava rock if you break it down as to what the percentages are you can see there's a lot more probably a lot more of pumice than anything else than the lava rock and then this third one which is zeolite so you may know it from the aquarium trade where it's used quite a lot for uh, marine fish. Um, and it's one that you do have to be a bit careful with because um, too much and, or, you know, too little and there's no use and too much can be quite damaging. But for in the plant industry, um, if you're going to if it's used for handling and, and basically balancing the pH, then it's going to help you with um, the macro and micro nutrients keeping those in in the, the, the right sort of level so it's it's not something that um I, i've ever really even looked looked up until i got pon um before before i used pon i used lecca and before i used lecca i used a mix of perlite with a lot of sphagnum and i still use that a lot for rooting and as you saw last week i still use lecca for certain plants and bigger plants but this mix here which, as I've said already, is well draining and it has a fourth ingredient, which we haven't talked about yet. So it's all coated. What One thing, it's sterile. So when you get it, there's very little chance of you getting any bacteria in there. It does go um, or it does gain bacteria over time. So that sterility does not remain. It gets coated with bacteria as anything does. And that can over time lead to problems, which is why you can actually wash it. It's fully reusable, which is super, super useful. Now, there, you'll find the odd little um, uh, slow release uh, granule. Let me find another one. So there's another one there. These are like little slow release pellets. There's a few of them in there. And apparently it is coated with fertilizer as well. So don't be using this with any of your carnivorous plants because there's fertilizer in here and, and carnivores can't really handle that or shouldn't really be given that. Um, but for most other plants, pretty much, I don't think there is a plant that I've tried that has failed. Now, my requirements as to or, or my recommendations of which plants to put in based on what I do is I don't put my larger plants in pond. I might mix pond in or use it in the ways that I'm going to tell you at the bottom of pots. But I keep all of my larger plants in lecker and I just find that it one one huge pot of, of pond is very, very heavy 
and it can retain a lot of water. So as you can see, this is all of my um, uh, albos. Um, some of them are in larger pots, all in pond. Some of, the, some of them are in self-watering pots, as you can see there. Some of them are in the smaller white pots that I've just described. So here we go with the Syngonium uh, Rei. You've got another Albo. Uh, that's the Three Kings we just looked at there. And another Albo. And down below you'll see things like my Epipremnum are in there as well. So we've got a Epipremnum Glacier in this one. We've got an epipremnum, um, this one's actually, it doesn't look like it, but this is actually a pearls and jade and it loves its time in, in pond. This is a global green, it's also in pond. So, and then you move over to my, things like my Brontianum um, and my Syndapsus, and I keep them in a mix. So sometimes I'll go back to a uh, Coco Coir and a, uh, a pearlite mix, uh, certainly, I mean, this one arrived like this, so I left it in that. Now that will, I will convert that over because the roots on this are quite clean. The, this is an officinalis, uh, Syndapsis officinalis. Um, move this one out of the way. Uh, and all of my smaller Syndapsis here, that one's a bit crispy on the end there. All of these are in pond and quite dry actually. But this is a good example of we'll we'll take this one and we'll have a look at how dry it actually is because this hasn't been watered for days and days. So let's just use this one and we'll tip it out. So let's take a, a look at this, which is a Syngonium Cream Illusion. And this is one that I took as a little tiny cutting and it spent its entire life in pond in this tiny little pot. So it's always been in here and it's been... Um, when I uh, propagated it, I let the roots get to about here. And then I would imagine now that these roots are starting to come out. I can't really show you on this without tipping stuff everywhere. But this is a good example of how most of my pond um, uh, plants work. So what we're going to do is we're going to tip it out onto some paper towel and we'll see how moist it is. There's no moisture at all in the pot. It's completely dry with a bit of dust in it. So this, this I would think would be ready for a water, but it might surprise us because um, the roots could still retain a lot of liquid. So let's have a look at it on, on this uh, paper towel. And I've done it on a paper towel because it's a great way to, to see how much moisture comes out when you, when you tip them out. So I'll just start tipping it out. I'll tip away. In fact, I'll tip away um, the, the first layer into uh, the pot that it came out of. So anything that's fairly loose, will tip into there. That means I won't have too much to play with on the on the paper towel. So that's that's cleared that out nicely. And now I'm just going to pull it out and see what happens. So there's definitely some bite at the bottom and then a whole lump of um, roots come out in one go. You can see that. And again, I would normally now photograph this for my uh, for my floating plants collection, but this is full. Uh, as you can see, the roots are completely full of, of uh, pond all the way through. So I'm going to give it a good shake. So a good tap and a shake will remove 90% of that now, and then we'll start looking at what we've got. So this root system is a great example. Um, it, 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 there's a little bit of darkness uh, on the root here let me see if i can show you close up so you can definitely see there's there's definitely still moisture there if i tip this onto here you can see that there is moisture still going from the the um pond onto the paper towel so it shows that the, it is definitely still moist so it absolutely didn't need to be watered and apart from that little bit of darkness there on that root look at all the healthy growth there so there's healthy growth all around. And if I just do the smell test, it just smells like fresh soil, um, which is weird because there's no soil here, but it smells healthy. You can tell um, rot a mile off by that smell. Um, but that is a very, very healthy root system and it's still giving um, new uh, growth, root, root uh, growth here and here which means that it's it's really healthy and it's still trying to find uh, you know more more ways to root so that for me is exactly how i'd like to see things that are grown in pond 
So it's got it's got this root, it's got this nested system where it means it's spreading out sideways, left and right, and it's gone all the way through the pond. There's zero water stood in that pot because it didn't need it. It simply, you know, it's still got moisture retained in the in the pond and it's healthy all the way through. And obviously that's then showing in the leaves. So that's that's the way I generally do it. So so pot full of pond, plant in the pot, pot in the cash pot or catch pot and not too much water. So the big, big thing here is not to over water. Um, and I am an underwaterer, so I'm, uh, you know, and I've taken years to, to, to get to that point, really. But you can see that there, there's no problems there at all. And I would be tempted, I would have been tempted to water that based on what I was seeing from the bottom of the pot. So that's a really good example of where pond holds that moisture, even though it drains and it's, you know, it's good for aeration. It, it does drain well and retain moisture, which is kind of an oxymoron, I think we'd call that. But I'm happy enough with that um, as, as, a, as a, a system, and that's how I generally do, you know, use Pond. So the benefits, let's quickly run through them. So the big benefits of Pond are it's clean, so it's clean and sterile when you get it. You're not going to get as much uh, in the way of pest problems. So... Because there's no organic matter for the gnats um, or any of the other pests to, to lay their eggs in, then they, they don't breed on them. So that's useful. Some people say it's expensive, but it's relative because you should, in theory, never really run out of this stuff because you can just keep washing it. If you lose a plant, you wash the, 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 the pond and, 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 and basically move on. And it's, I mean, if you like soil and you like getting your fingers dirty and you like that, you know, if you're a gardener, you're gonna, you're not gonna like this as much because you're gonna love the soil. But as 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 a medium, it's a nice clean apart. You know, it's not good that you spill it a lot, and I and I do that a lot. I, you know, I have I have pond little, little little pond spills all the time. But overall, it's a really nice system if you've got a lot of cuttings that can go straight from water into pond and grow them on avoid converting if you can and if you do convert just make sure you wash off as much of that soil as you can i really do love the medium it, it, it is one of it is the, my favorite overall but there are some obviously as i've said there are some watch outs a little few watch outs so i hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up it does help us to get in front of other people who might like this kind of planty content and if you are liking a the video then please subscribe to the channel we put videos out every week don't forget you can hit that notification bell and we'll let you know when we do put those videos out so have a lovely week everybody